Well, the heartbeat of America was truly felt in Houston, Texas. Hello, everybody. I'm Rick DeBrule. Welcome to the latest edition of Barrett Jackson Top 10, this time from our auction in Houston, Texas. There were more than 200 great Chevrolets that crossed the block. There were Camaros, Impalas, Chevelles. There were so many Corvettes, we've given them their own Top 10, which is just another reason why you're going to want to touch that button right there and make sure you subscribe. So let's get straight to our Top 10. Not a big surprise that Texas is truck country, so tied for number 10 was a pickup truck. 500 horsepower custom. And what was it tied with? Well, a 2019 Yanko Stage 2 Camaro. Up on the block right now here in Houston, a 1956 Chevrolet 3100 custom pickup truck. Custom is the word. The suspension, as we can see, is air. It's lowering down. It's settling as we speak. <laughs> it's very cool. Up and down with a turn of a switch. Lift motor's running a pump. This one has an LT4 V8, 4L60 four-speed overdrive automatic, nine-inch forward rear axle, and just beautiful sort of a oh, burgundy metallic paint. A lot of best truck and best in show awards go along with this one, which uh, the consigner says has 3,500 man hours in its build. Let's take a peek with the chassis cam under this beautiful Chevy pickup. The front axle, the beam and leaf springs, long gone. There's a rack and pinion deal, aluminum oil pan. This is 700R4, nice dual exhaust system and stainless. Ford nine inch rear axle, there it is. No leaf springs back here. That's a four link setup. Really, really nice. No, it's so beautiful underneath. It's almost a shame that you don't get to see that. It's so nicely done. You know, something inside this truck, where they're moving it now, is the fact that the ceiling has been customized and molded to a variety of shapes and forms. So I like the attention to detail, really, really deep. This very deep, dark cherry metallic with pewter accents, the, uh, the candy apple finish on this is just so bright and so gleaming. I'd, I'd kind of be afraid to drive this. You know, you wouldn't want to get any road rash on that paint job. You know, to that point, the rear valance has been rolled, and I like the artful presentation. The chrome tips come through. However, you got to wonder if on a long run, when these things get nice and warm, they might start to crack that paint. Don't know. No sign of it now, but uh, nice work. C could come at a price. Oftentimes, Steve, if you're going to do that, you'd have some flexible pipe in front of it to absorb some of that road shock. Yeah, very subtle. I like the little ducktail spoiler merged into the underside of the bed. Uh, tailgate right there. Pretty cool. You know, as Mike said, so many awards. It won Cleveland Autorama Best Truck, Best in Class, Good Guys Builder's Choice Award. In Pittsburgh, it was the Steel City Six. So no shortage of people have said this is a high-quality truck. And look at the price. We're at $140,000. This is the. That's what it sells for, $140,000 for a 1956 Chevy 3100 custom pickup truck. The dark cherry metallic, beautifully done. Lot number 769, 2019 Chevrolet Camaro Yinko Stage 2 Custom Coupe. This is number 22 of 25 built by spe Specialty Vehicle Engineering in 2019. This was the last year of only 25 Stage 2s to be built, making it a limited production. Power, that comes from a Stage 2, 1,000 horsepower, 6.8 liter LT1 supercharged engine, and that's paired to a six-speed manual transmission. Number 22 of 25 built, finished in Summit White with black stripes and red badging. One LE track performance package. It comes with a certificate of origin from SVE, window stickers, dyno sheet, brochure, 125 miles. <laughs> Everybody, 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 everybody
a modern Camaro, we're gonna go to something vintage. That 2019 Yenko to a 1969 Camaro. It's a custom, nicknamed the Maniac. 525 horsepower, six-speed transmission. It was the number nine sale overall for all the Chevrolets. Here's our number 703 rolling up on the block. There have been changes. This is an updated description. 1969 Chevrolet Camaro Custom Coupe, known as the Maniac. This car has recently been restored to the high level of a uh, high level in 2021. It checks all the boxes, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, powered by a GM Performance LS3 V8, rated at 525 horsepower. The vehicle has been recently serviced and detailed, including platinum ceramic coating, all documented, invoice included. MS Classic Cars Collection. Performance LS3 V8. It's rated at 525 horsepower and it has a Tremec Magnum six speed manual transmission. 000. Looks like we've got a three-way tie for the number eight top-selling Chevys of the Houston auction. First one we're going to talk about is a 1972 Blazer. Beautiful custom. Now, this one you didn't see during the broadcast. Also tied with it, a 1970 Chevelle. Another high-dollar custom job. And the third one we're going to look at, once again, it's a three-way tie, was a 1969 Camaro, a beautiful restoration. 712, 1972 Chevrolet K5 Blazer Custom. <laughs> Recent professional no expense spared frame off restoration and it was awarded. Chevy truck pick at Good Guys Nashville Nationals. <laughs> Seven sixty six, nineteen seventy, Chevrolet Chevelle Custom Coupe. Updated description here: a fresh restoration, test miles only. Nineteen seventy Pro Touring Chevelle. It received a high dollar custom build with modern technology throughout. Power? Well, that comes from a modern, electronically fuel injected Chevy LS two V eight engine, made it to a Tremec TKX five speed manual transmission. This is lot number seven sixty six, nineteen seventy Chevrolet Chevelle Custom Coupe. Save your jokes, TJ. Bring your kids. Kids, explain to them all the great stories so they can appreciate everything we've gone through to get to the transportation we have today. And up on the block right now, the 1970 Chevelle Custom Pro Touring Bill. Well, Pro Touring it is. You know, Pro Touring is a style that it includes acceleration, braking, and handling in equal measures. This one does still have coil springs all the way around, but they're coil overs, not the big splushy springs from GM. I like the LS through engine, the five-speed stick, and the nine-inch rear axle. I'm surprised to find myself liking this paint job. It is 
Battleship Gray through and through. It's a technique we once described as dip painting, as if you dipped the entire car into one vat of paint and then added the gloss black stripes. Bumpers and everything are all Battleship Gray, and somehow on this Chevelle, it looks right. Willwood disc brakes all the way around. It wasn't so long ago that Willwood was not at all in the street market, but rather just strictly road race and drag race type brakes for off-road usage. But they really got wise and entered the street market. They're one of the leading names now. Willwood, Bear, and uh, good stuff, front and rear. $150,000, that's the hammer price in the 1970 Chevelle Custom Pro Touring build. Well, let's stay with 1969 and with Camaro and with Z28. Oh, this is an amazing car. This is lot number 780, and it's about as good as it gets for a Z28 1969. It's got the cross ram, and yeah, the four-wheel disc brakes. JL8, $500, got you. Rear discs, not to be confused with Willwards or Bear or aftermarket brakes. These are Delco Moraine disc brakes on the rear of this car. Only 206 were built this way. Now, there are no documents supporting this car as having been one, but it's absolutely correct to look at. Under the hood, look at that. That's the Crossram 302 with a couple of huge 700 CFM Holley four barrels. That's a bunch of CFM, but again, it's a 7,000 RPM engine on race in race tune. The consigner, one of the things they've done on the car cart is they've got all the serial numbers listed for all of the parts in that engine that they're making it very clear they know exactly what kind of part is in there. It's pretty darn impressive when you're reading the car card. Pretty tiny tight, but everything's in there. Now, the front disc brakes in 1969 went from four-piston to two-piston on all Camaros except for JL8 cars. Yes, these retain the four-piston calipers used in 1968, and these are actually Corvette calipers on these things in 1969. But if you take a look at the rear wheel opening between the spokes, we'll see a shiny rotor. And that's something you'll only see on 206 JL8 cars. It's a rare sight. Enjoy it. And you realize this, this is the third year, the final evolution of this first generation Camaro. You know, they made significant changes between 67 and 68, huge changes between 68 and 69 cosmetically, but also underneath. They were improving as they went every year. Originally white, now black. This has the dual quad cross ram on the 302 V8. So very highly optioned with about everything you could get on a Z28. And it is sold for $150,000. The number seven Chevy sale of the Houston auction was a 2019 Hennessy Custom Edition Resurrection. It's one of only 24 produced. This one has more than 1,200 horsepower and less than 800 miles on the odometer. So what did it sell for? Let's watch. Lot number 719, and here's a man that can tell us a whole lot more about this beautiful, beautiful vehicle rolling up right now. Here's John Hennessy, and if you're in the lobby, you saw one of his newest creations, but he built and upgraded this. John, tell us about the car. Hey, Houston, what's up? Hey, this is our Resurrection Camaro. It's one of two. It's 1,200 horsepower. And if you guys are paying attention to the automotive world, in a few years, you probably won't be able to buy uh, a V8 powered muscle car. That's coming, unfortunately. But for now, you've got the Resurrection here, 1200 horsepower, one of two. It's probably one of the most rare muscle cars that we've modified in our last 30 years. So good luck bidding. Thank you. So it's an LT5 in it, right? It's got an LT5 supercharged V8 uh, that's upgraded to 1200 horsepower. Uh, it's a manual and uh, carbon fiber hood and I think the customer originally spent over $200,000 on the car. So, okay. there we lot go. go for it. Lot number 17, 719 is where we're at. It's a 2019 Chevrolet Camaro ZL1 Hennessy Custom Edition. Here's Resurrection. the world could you find one only 737 miles over eighty thousand dollars in hennessy conversions on this beautiful 2019 camaro zl1 
Time for number six, and here's the question. Do you like customs or stock? You like it all original? Well, if so, you're gonna love this 1970 Chevelle SS. It's a 454, 450 horsepower, and all of the original sheet metal, completely authenticated. Let's watch. 1970 Chevelle, this one rolling up on the block right now is an SS 454. Well, the second one of these that we have seen uh, born as a 454, which was the top of the muscle car mountain for Chevrolet uh, in 1970. They came as LS5, they came as LS6 in uh, very, very limited numbers. So expect this to ring the bell. We're already at $110,000, and it just stopped rolling up to the block. Matching numbers car, but something kind of unusual here. It does not have the hood pins or the functional ZL2 column induction hood. Some sources say that stuff was standard, others say no. Interestingly, here's a great look at that non cowl induction air cleaner. The dual snorkels, kind of you know, station wagon esque, but that's correct stuff. And on the underside of the non cowl induction hood, we don't see the closure, the encircle, and the valve on the back. But the dome hood is correct, but kind of weird. A numbers matching non cowl induction car. But this is also weird, too. Inside, it's a bench seat car. You gotta remember, you paid an extra 125 bucks for the buckets. This is a bench. It's also a non cowl car and it's a 410 axle so this is a drag strip machine and a very faithful rep, uh, recreate or excuse me restoration right down to the re uh, recreated Goodyear polyglass GT tires that were quite popular then with raised white letters yeah, that 410 rear axle ratio in the back there is a pretty steep gear. What that means, basically, it's like being on a 10-speed bicycle in first gear, pedaling your, your, your butt off, not going very far, but you can accelerate very quickly to your maximum speed. So that the 410 is probably a drag strip gear. Whoever bought this, well, wanted to go drag racing. Numbers keep climbing. We're at $145,000. Still moving. Inside the bench seat, believe it or not, is actually about 30 pounds lighter than a pair of bucket seats. And by getting rid of that center console, another 35 or 40 pounds was shed. Two-door Chevelle was the only car at Chevrolet where you could get these Z28 style stripes other than a Z28 Camaro. $160,000 for an original matching numbers engine authenticated by Jerry McNish, Chevelle SS454. If you like our Barrett Jackson Top 10 series, make sure you touch that button right there and subscribe. Okay, we're going to go from that original Chevelle to a custom Chevelle. In this case, it's a 1970 Chevelle Malibu Custom. Stunning three-year professional pro touring build. It's got a 6.2 liter engine, a nine inch rear end. Let's watch this one cross the block. 1970 Chevrolet Cheval Malibu Custom Coupe, professional built over a three-year time frame, freshly completed. Pro Touring 1970 Chevrolet Cheval Malibu has an L86 6.2 liter V8 engine, 457 horsepower through a GM 8L90E eight-speed automatic transmission. I like the color on this. It's a modern take on uh, Chevy's Fathom Blue. Uh, with some dark gray carbon fiber looking almost ghost flames. This one has much wider wheels and tires than it was born with, has a custom dash and center console. I think more work has been done inside and underneath 
to this otherwise stock appearing 70 Chevelle. Yeah, the transmission is something kind of special. It's called a 4L90E. It's an 8-speed, not the usual 4-speed 4L80. And this transmission arrived in 2015, commonly seen in pickup trucks, Camaros, Corvettes, and SUVs. First gear is 461. That's really low, which gives this really strong off-the-line scoot. It's got Willwood brakes, so you, when you're exercising all 457 horses, you can stop at the same time. Steve, I'm glad you gave those numbers because these new automatics, these 8, 9, and 10-speed autos, have a very low first and second gear for great acceleration, so they can have a very tall rear end gear. Uh, on my pickup on the highway, I'm doing 70 miles an hour at about 1,600 RPM when that gets to top gear. Yeah, the more gear ratios you have, the more use you can use of the rear axle. You know, this thing, the top gears, the seventh and eighth gears on this one are both overdrive. So you can have a 456 in the back of this thing, it would behave like a 290 on the highway, which is awesome. We've got two phone bidders involved in it right now, as well as a bidder down on the floor. Bidder on the floor just said goodbye, and the phone bidder comes away the winner at $165,000. Time for the number four Chevrolet sale of the Houston auction. Turns out to be another tie. In this case, we've got a Camaro and a pickup truck. We'll start with the Camaro. It's a 1967 Camaro Z28, well-documented 302 cubic inch engine, and it's tied with a 1958 Chevrolet Apache pickup truck. It's a fleet side, beautifully done. Let's see what they sell for. Right behind it, we got a 1967 Camaro Z28. And here is a well-known Camaro expert, Jerry McNish, who vets these cars for Barrett Jackson. He's going to tell you this one is really special. This vehicle has been in the 1967 Z28 Camaro registry for 30 years. And here's a man right here that can tell us a whole lot more about this. Jerry beauty. McNish, the expert on these cars. Jerry? Thank you, Craig. This car is very special. It's one of the few 67 Z28s that has its complete original drivetrain. It was owned by Ed Mueller, a well-known collector who collected some of the rarest Chevrolets on the planet. It was restored by Kevin McKay at Corvette Repair under my supervision. This car has won every award that it can win. It's won the USA One, the Atlanta Camaro Nationals. This is one special car. You won't find one any nicer. Joseph, Thank do you. your job. Well, this is the first year for the Z28. Only 602 of these were built. This one's kind of weird for two things it doesn't have. It does not have a radio, it's radio delete, and it does not have pausey. Yep, you had to pay an extra $42.15 for a limited slip differential. So when you bang gears in this thing, the right rear tire is the only one going to spin. The Z28 performance package was offered by Chevrolet to homologate that 302 for the FCCA Trans Am Series so that Roger Penske and Mark Donahue could go out and win the 67 championship. Where are the spoilers? They hadn't been produced yet when this car rolled off the assembly line. And uh, note especially the stripes right there on the trunk and how the stripe is relieved for the chrome emblem. You don't see that on later Zs. Now, if these, look, if these wheels look kind of tall and geeky, well, that's because these are 15-inch rims. Camaro Z28 was the only Camaro offered with 15-inch rims in 67. They are present and accounted for, and these are the original date-coded rims. Inside this, again, is that radio delete plate. 54 bucks for a radio, and uh, somebody who ordered this thing probably had the idea they weren't going to listen to the radio very much. Instead, they listened to that 6,000 RPM 302. That's what I do. Less than 1,000 Z28s were built in this first year. And this one with its original drivetrain and Jerry McNish's stamp of approval is really going to command a premium. Yeah, in addition to Jerry McNish talking about the provenance, it's got tons of documentation. It's got the original dealer invoice, the window sticker, the original new vehicle inspection form. It's got copies of titles throughout the course of the year. So there is so much documentation to go along with this. And that's why the current bid is $150,000. One crazy detail is that the Z28 came with a 12-bolt rear axle and 373 gears, which are pretty steep for street use. But again, this particular car, nobody paid the $42.15 for the G80 Posse. It's 
possible they were confused into thinking Pazzi was included with Z28. It wasn't. This is a one-legger. Very weird. All right, we have two bidders on the floor. They're standing 20 feet apart, staring each other down, each talking to the collectors at the other end of the cell phones that they each represent. It is a shootout here in Texas. And we've got another bidder up in the skybox. So there are multiple bidders involved in this. You gotta keep in mind, the Z28 package cost just $358.10. If you ask me, that was money very well spent. One hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars for a 1967 Camaro Z28 going up to the skybox. Good money on the block right now. Hundred thousand dollars, 110 bid for a 1958 Chevy Apache custom pickup truck. I've got a feeling that several bidders waited all day for this one to roll across the block. A, a true resto mod, paint way better than it was born with. And big money. Yeah, small block Chevy with 700 R4 automatic with a floor shifter, 10 bolt rear axle. Yeah, if somebody thought they were going to wait till the end of the auction to pick up a deal, not so. We're at $170,000. This one's not to be confused with the Chevy Cameo Carrier, which was in its final year for 58 as well. This is steel bodied, that was fiberglass. Well, we had a phone bidder involved, but it was the gentleman up in the skybox that pulled it off. $175,000 for that beautiful Apache custom pickup truck. Time for the top three Chevrolet sales from Houston. Number three, it's a 1969 Camaro. This one's a custom. It's got an LS7 V8 engine, six-speed manual transmission, sort of a resto mod build. Looks relatively stock from the outside, but very custom underneath. Let's watch it cross the block. Lot number 779.1, 1969 Chevrolet Camaro Custom Coupe, presented with RS styling, cow hood, Z28 badges, all new glass and triple plated chrome bumpers, powered by an LS7 crate V8 engine mated to a Tremec six speed manual. <laughs> <laughs> Still going at 177 for the 69 Chevy Camaro Custom. This is a beautiful stance. Big fat wide tires in the back, bright red. Lot to love. $177,000 is the hammer price. 
Time for the number two Chevrolet sale of Houston. And this one turns out to be a very original Chevelle, but this one is an LS6. Part of the LS6 registry, it's got less than 70,000 original miles, that 454 cubic inch engine that's matching numbers. It's got everything you could possibly ask for. So what did it sell for? Ladies and gentlemen, moving right along to lot number 750 is a 1970 Chevy Chevelle LS6. LS6, gonna need mic three, Baker, mic three, please. This is a specialist update. This LS6 is one of only 4,475 LS6 is sold in 1970, and it has 69,000 original miles, 454 cubic inch LS6 V8 engine boasting 450 horsepower, and here's Shane Ratliff. Uh, two million. <laughs> for the number one Chevrolet sale of the Houston auction that wasn't a Corvette. Remember, we've got a complete Corvette top 10 as well. You're gonna wanna make sure you watch. But this one, well, it was a custom, a 1971 Camaro. A little bit of a surprise right there. It's nicknamed the ultimate Camaro 598. That's because it has a 598 cubic inch engine under the hood, pumping out 800 horsepower with a nitrous oxide system. And just for fun, they had a video showing the car going 200 miles an hour. So what did it sell for when it crossed the block? Let's take a ride and find out. And up there right now, a 1971 Camaro Custom. Let's call it the ultimate Camaro. Yeah, they're making a big deal out of 598. Well, that's the cubic inch displacement of the all-aluminum Scott Shafiroff big block Chevy under the hood. Now, the LS1 engine is great, the Gen 3 Chevy, it's all good, but the trouble is the bore centers limit those to about 480 cubic inches. By contrast, the big block Chevy has a five-inch bore space, almost, that would bring it way out to almost 600 cubes as seen here. So the LS is good, but it can never match the rat for ultimate displacement. My favorite part about this custom are these rear quarter panels. In the Trans Am series, you could get a patch panel here to pull that fender outward for wheel clearance. Here they've done just a beautiful job and done it all in metal. To widen this car, I would say a good three inches per side. Uh, to 
harness those huge Asante hoops and the Pirelli tires that are wrapped around them. I love the six-speed manual. You've got to love that double overdrive. So this probably has a very real 200 mile an hour terminal velocity if you have the room to do it. Yes, those are 24s in the back. Are they too big? Well, I don't know. 800 horsepower coming out of that engine. And we can't see inside, but they actually took a dashboard from a 2010 Camaro and put that into this 1971 Custom. Indeed, there it is. Here are those squared off retro-esque gauge pods. Nicely merged into the vintage Camaro body. A lot of subtle work on the nose. Areas that would otherwise have uh, seams have been filled in. I love the projector beam inboard lamps here. Those are amazing. Those are brighter than heck. Uh, those are not just directionals. Directionals are hidden behind the grill, I believe. Well, right now, the build is being respected with a price of $4 per hour. There's over 4,000 hours in this one. Okay, $40 per hour. Still, you, could, you couldn't build this car for what it's currently been, I don't think. Well, and it doesn't look like there's a single panel on this car that has not been modified. I love the way they've taken those bumpers and set them in very slightly in the front. And like you talked about, Mike, the way those flares come over the back. This is just a beautiful build all the way around. Closed men on 200. There we have it, $200,000, the current bid. Yeah, to your point, Rick, if you could see through this chrome plating, this bumper has been sliced, sections welded, finished, ground, brass plated, then chrome plated. A lot of work in that bumper alone. Well, it sure looked like that gentleman who was bidding said, no, I'm done. And then the bidding assistant talked to him for a moment. He went, yeah, let's go one more. Like the body match nitrous oxide tank in the back. You don't want to exchange that one at the speed shop. You want to have that one refilled. Otherwise, you're going to lose your matchup paint. NOS, nitrous oxide systems. Got an internet bidder. We've got somebody on the floor as well. Away he walks. Looks like he's completely done. That gentleman handing the handling the internet bidder. His job is to make sure that the auctioneer knows that the internet bid is involved. It's not just a number that pops up on a screen. It's a person who's sitting there. I just noticed the Z28 style stripes. They're like ghost stripes on this. Two hundred and seventeen thousand dollars for a 1971 Camaro Custom. Well, that will do it for our Chevrolet Top 10 sales from the inaugural Houston, Texas auction. Make sure you click down there and subscribe, or you can just click over there and just watch the next video. I'm Rick DeBrule, and I'm out of here.